I'm Sarah, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you guys some UX design tools that I think all UX design students should know about it. Uh, those tools will help you with your style guides, uh, choosing your colors, your typography. Uh, they will also help you uh, creating avatars for your personas or for your interfaces. And my last tools are really good. Uh, they actually can help you with your competitor's analysis or they can also help you if you wanna build better study cases. I am enrolled in this Google UX certification program. I have a full video on the channel where I talk about the course, how the classes I like, what is the content for the course, and what, I'm, what, I'm, what is my opinion on that course. So I'll leave this link in the description box below if you wanna check it out. And let's start talking about those UX tools. So the first project uh, I have for the Google UX Certificate program was to start designing my own portfolio. And in the course, they mentioned that you can use Squarespace, Wix, or Webflow, and I decided to go ahead with Webflow. I'm still learning how to use in the platform, but I'm gonna use that as an example today to show you the first tools. Let's say you are browsing online and you see an illustration with a color you really like, or you are in a website and you really like the color they use for a title or for a button, and then you decide you want to use that color in a future project. How can you do that? How can you learn which color they have there? There is an extension for Google Chrome that will really help you with that. It's called Color Pick Eyedropper. And I will show you guys how that works. I'm gonna go here in my extension bar and this is the icon for the color dropper. I'm gonna click here, roll over the page. Let's say I like this white, I can save that. I like this yellow, I can save that. But I actually like this blue in this button. So I roll over that, I'm gonna click and copy this number. This number will be the exactly color that we are using this blue. Not a darker blue, not a light, light blue, the exact color. And I'm gonna just copy. After you copy the color you want, we are going to a second UX design tool, which is a website called Colors. I really like this website because you can create your own color palette or you can explore trending palettes over there. We will start generating a new palette and it will open up uh, a random palette array. Let's say I'm gonna go here where we have this dark orange because I didn't really like that color. And I'm gonna paste the color we got from Webflow. Remember that blue for the button? I'm gonna just paste that number here. And then I have the exactly number for that color. Um, another cool thing about this platform, you can click over here on View Shades. And this is the color we have, but let's say I want a little bit lighter color. I can go to the next one over here and that will change to a lighter color. I didn't like this one. I think it maybe should be brighter. So I click in the next one and then we'll change to a little bit brighter color. Maybe you wanna use that like for... I'm gonna click here, view palette. And then you can get that reference as well. Okay, so now my next tool is to help you with fonts. When you are making your style guide to decide what font you would like to use, maybe what's the size that you need, things like that. So you're gonna go on this page, roll over this uh, extension for Google Chrome as well, it's called What Font. I'm gonna click over here and let's say I really like the title. So I'm gonna roll over and then you can see what font they are using that website. If I click here, they will tell me the name of the font, the family, so you can, I can see the sans serif. You can also see the size, which I think this is really nice, at least for me, I'm not experienced on that. So I can see, okay, they are using a six pixels to make their H1, to make their title. What's the size that they're using for the body text? And you click here and you can see, oh, they're using 20 pixels for that. What is the size we're using for their buttons? And then you can see, oh, we're using 16 pixels. And if you are browsing another website, they might be using different uh, sizes for their fonts, um, but then you can kind of see what they use the most. 
let's say you go to MailChimp and then you can check what's the size we are using for their title and then you can pick from there. So I think this tool is really helpful. Um, that extension, whoops, it's called What Font. And again, you just install on Google Chrome and you can have that ping your bar, so it's really helpful. My next tool is the one that I use um, for my first project for the Google XD uh, course. The first project was to design an app and I chose to design an ordering app. One of the exercises I had in that project was to create personas. Uh, so when you are creating personas, uh, they advise you to add either a picture or an avatar. When you are adding more information about uh, the personas, when you are adding a face to the persona, when you are adding what's their profession, what's their age, what do they usually do, how is their day like, you are adding characteristics that will really help guide whoever is designing the app so you can really think about a person or about a group that we're targeting. Uh, I work in a hospital right now, and when we think about our patients, we always think about the persona called Jane. So let's say we're having a conversation with other employees and we're trying to decide how can you provide a better uh, experience of care for those, those patients, we also mention Jane. How can we improve the experience for Jane? Uh, how our work impact Jane? So you kind of more connected and you imagine um, that group could be maybe not you, but could be a neighbor, could be a friend. So I think that's really good. So to create our avatars, there is this website called Get Avatars um, with two, three A's. Uh, it's called Avatar Generator. And you guys can see here, there's already an example of one. Um, you can change the background for transparent or you can put a circle. You can change the hair color or the length of the hair. Let's go for maybe a shorter hair. Short, round, that would work. Uh, and you can remove the glass from the person or you can give a different kind of glasses, for example. I think I like the round one. Yes, and then you can change the hair color. I kind of like that one though, that's the thing. Um, brown, I think silver gray would be okay. You can change, uh, you can add a, a beard or you can do a mustache. I'm gonna leave this person without one. I wanna call her Katie. Um, the next one. It's a really nice tool, UX design tool. And that will help you and has been helping me uh, to create more a critical view when I'm seeing a, a product, when I'm working, when I'm seeing an app, when I'm using an app, or when I'm using a website. One of the exercises I have in the course uh, is to analyze my competitors. So I have been downloading other ordering apps, uh, and this website has really helped me to think that in a more critical way, try to think what the designer had in mind, what was the intention of the design, maybe with that color or with that button or with that type of font or with the action they have uh, in their apps. So this website, it's called growth.design and has a lot of case studies in big apps we talk about Instagram, Headspace, um, TikTok, and others. And it's also really fun the way they do. So if you go here in their website, this is how it looks like, growth.design, and you click on case studies, this page will load again, and then they have those different case studies. Uh, let's go with maybe Airbnb. And then you use your keyboard to navigate to the case study. And they do that like kind of telling a story. So they have those characters, um, they have the balloons, like you read uh, graphics. Um, so in this case, uh, the guy wants to travel a little bit and then he's thinking about go to Airbnb because he's looking for a place to stay when he's traveling. 
and then you can see uh, the interactions uh, when they are using the website, when they are using the app. So they really start to analyze that website and how would be like the customer journey when they are using that app. So here you can see uh, in, our, in their BNB web app, they use their first name to talk with the user. So that creates, uh, it's kind of when the brand is really thinking about the voice of the brand and the tone of voice. Uh, so when the customers feel like that brand is more friendly and welcoming and not a cold and distant brand. So they talk about that here. So that's something nice. And when you start to see uh, the app in a critical way and think about why they decide to do like that. Um, here they talk about, there's a search button over here, which is a really nice tool to have in the top of the page, but the contrast is low. So maybe they should increase the contrast here. So you they can easily guide the view. Um, so then you can really guide the user to use that tool, uh, to use that search field. Um, and then here you kind of see when it gets a little bit frustrated, um, the user gets frustrated when he's using the app. Um, and when they get excited about it, like in this case, we're talking about um, the location personalization and how that can help in those people who are using the app outside of their home country. So that is really good. And then here, um, the user uh, is really excited because we can see the results even without selecting the date or selecting how many people are going for that trip. Uh, so that gives a nice experience for that customer. And then I also really like this website because it's a fun and entertaining way uh, to learn more about how a designer think about when they are searching a website. And you also think more about how the user would interact with those different screens uh, and how they would feel about those. So this is the first website. It's kind of to help you uh, to have that more critical view and to really think about what you like in that app or your competition's app, what you don't like a lot and see, think about those room for improvements. So when you're creating your own design, uh, you can make better decisions. Other last UX design tool that I wanna share with you today um, is a tool that has been helping me with my competitor analysis. I mentioned to you that part of my first project, I'm designing an ordering app and I need to analyze my competition. Check what I really like about our apps and what I don't like, what I think we can improve on, they could improve on, or I can use those things and when I'm making my own design, I can have that in mind too. Uh, so this, like I said, I was downloading the apps in my phone and doing those interactions um, to see how is the user experience on that and this, really, this website really helps with that. This website is called mobbing.design and has a lot of different apps within uh, this website and you can see every single screen of an app using this website, which is really nice and saves you a lot of time. And you can be really specific as well. So here's the website, mobbing.design. If you scroll down, you can see they have a lot of different apps. Uh, so you can search to those. I'm designing an ordering app. So let's go here and look for DoorDash. So I click over here and if you roll down, you can see that they have every little screen on that app saved here. They have like screenshots of all of those. Let's say I'm designing my own board screen. I can go here specific on that and just check how they do. Uh, you can see full screen, I don't think we need that, uh, but you can see the colors we use. The call to action button is in a really right, bright red, so it's really uh, to make the customer pay attention to that button and kind of to guide him what's the next action, what's the next step they should go. Um, there is a high contrast between um, the fonts, and you can really see what they really want to highlight in this page. 
Um, let's see, I also want to check how you can pick your food items. Um, so if I click here, I see we have some categories over here. Uh, and you can choose the store you want and it, it has really nice pictures. You can see right ratings, search about their price, if it's a really cheap or if it's a more expensive restaurant. Uh, you pick your restaurant, I don't know. And then here you decide to pick your food. So we have the fries and we have the different sizes. Um, the app I'm designing uh, is for a coffee shop, so I can really use something like that so the customer can select the size of their drinks. They can add special instruction as well. Uh, let's see if I have something that you can... Here, maybe this. Uh, maybe I can add some screen that they can add, let's say, if they choose to add a flavor or if they want a decaf drink. I need to think about how I will do that in my website, in my app. And then I also, oh, here you can see when you're selecting the items. Let's see if you can see the cart. Oh, and then you select your form of payment. So we have Apple Pay, PayPal, and credit and debit card. I think that's something I want to add, all those options for payment. Um, those are the UX design tools for today's video. Um, we talk about colors, typography, creating avatars, study cases, and also uh, this tool that can help you with your competitor's analysis as well. Uh, let me know in the comments below what's your favorite UX design tool and how that can help me or you guys um, designing better websites. Let me know in the comments below what's your favorite because I want to check those out as well. Uh, thank you for watching the video. Um, see you guys next. Bye.